Hello and welcome to From Zero to Hero teaching UC++. In the last video we talked about inheritance. In this video we'll find out how to create lots of objects with minimal code by using constructors, how to hold those objects by using containers, and finally how to use those objects with loops. If we look at our vehicle class again, you'll see that there is a function with no return type that has the same name as the class. This is its constructor. So what is a constructor? A constructor is a function that is automatically called when an instance is created of that class. So for example, when we write car car1, the object is created and the constructor is called. Constructors like other functions can have parameters passed to them. They can also be called like any other function. So what are constructors used for? Well, this is quite a hot topic in the C++ community. Since inexperienced developers may create objects in ways that call constructors multiple times without realizing, putting too much code into a constructor can get quite inefficient or even cause issues if this problem arises. Another thing to note is that if you put code into the constructor, you cannot control when that code will be run, or at least not easily. For example, if you do a lot of initializing in the constructor that depends on various other classes, at the time you create the object, the constructor will be called, and the other classes it depends on may not themselves be initialized yet. On the plus side, it is a function that doesn't need to be explicitly called that you have access to use, which itself can be quite useful. Like everything with programming, there's a right situation and a wrong situation to utilize constructors. Let's look at a quick, quick example. In vehicle, we can add the following code. which will print out this message when an object is created. If we run that, you'll see that we created one car, one bike, and then another car, and creation was logged out three times, meaning that the constructor was called three times. So as you can see, we didn't explicitly call a function, yet the code was still run the possibilities. So next we're going to talk about loops. A loop is a way of running the same section of code multiple times. There are three main types of loops. A while loop, a do while loop, and a for loop. A while loop will run a section of code until a condition has been met. If the condition has been met when the loop is started, then it won't run. A do while loop is the same as a while loop, however it will always run the loop at least once. This is due to the conditional check being at the end of the loop as opposed to a while where the conditional check is at the start. And finally the for loop, which similar to the while loop will run until a condition has been met and the check for this is at the beginning of the loop. It also performs a snippet of code before the loop starts and another snippet after each iteration of the loop. So let's code some of these loops for an example.
I forgot to add the while at the end of the do. And I also need to increment count. Both of these. Let's try. Okay. So these loops will all print out from 1 to 10, however they will all do this in slightly different ways. Both the loop, uh, both the while loop and the do while loop, you need to initialize a count integer, check to see if the condition has been met, and increment the counter each iteration through the loop. The for loop is slightly different again, where the creation of the integer comes before the first semicolon. The condition is after the first semicolon and the increment is after the second semicolon. They're all slightly different and you'll find different situations that require different types of loops. Next we have containers. Containers are collections of objects. Today we'll keep it simple and just look at vectors. This is a vector. Don't forget to include the vector at the top. So a vector can hold multiple car objects, it can hold multiple integers, it can hold multiple of anything you want. We add to a vector by calling its pushback function. And since this is a vector of cars, we can create a car object by directly calling its constructor. What the pushback does is it takes what you give it and adds it to the back of the vector. To access something from a vector, the easiest way to do it, although there is many ways to do it, is to use square brackets. So if we were to access the first element of our cars vector, we would simply put zero into the square brackets. Remember in programming that pretty much everything starts from zero. So now finally, let's put it all together. So first things first, let's add 10 cars. And now let's access each one of those cars and initialize them. Mm. This is going to take far too much typing for my liking. Is there not a way that we can shorten it down? Well, if you remember from earlier, we were talking about the fact that constructors can take parameters. So we could just add parameters to the car constructor for all of the data that we need to build one of our car objects. Then we wouldn't need to call of our set functions to initialize it.
now with all of these constructors, we should just be able to pass in the make the registration top speed and the year built directly to them. Okay, that's much better. I just put some random information in, but at least we don't have to have blocks of code this size for every single one. So now we need to print them out. So similar to how we do bike, we'll print the bike and then we'll print our car0.print Again, I don't like all of this typing. Is there no other way we can shorten it down? Well, if you remember from earlier, we are talking about loops. You can find out how many objects a vector has by using its size function. So we could create a for loop that starts at zero and keeps looping until it's reached the size of the vector. Then in the loop, we should just be able to call the draw function, or the print function, should I say. Okay, that's much better. Although this has made me realize that I've completely forgotten to talk about operators. In short, you see the less than sign here. This will pass the test if the value on the left hand side is less than the value on the right hand side. I'll go through the rest of them at the beginning of the next video. So if we remove our old loop code, then if we run it again, we should see all 10 cars print out. Ah, and of course it doesn't know what a string is, because I haven't said it's from the standard namespace. Let's try again. And here as well. And there we go. So. To summarise what we've covered today, it's quite a lot. You may have to watch the video multiple times to, quite, to get the grips of it, but it all works very well together and provides you with the ability to handle lots of objects with smaller amounts of code. Uh, a, good ex uh, a good practice would be to try and go through and experiment with vectors and loops and see what you can come up with. All of this can, however, be done more efficiently but this is a really strong starting point. In the next episode, we'll talk about pointers and references, and of course, operators that I mentioned earlier.